All right, just wrapped another weekend of NCAA wrestling, and I don't want to get into the nitty-gritty of the wins, the losses, everything. I want to talk about something a little more topical, something that has been discussed in the wrestling community by fans, coaches, and wrestlers themselves over the last couple of years. And it's, it's a growing topic of frustration amongst all those parties. And it's the topic of ducking. And if you don't know, ducking is basically defined as you got a wrestler, he's healthy, he could go. He doesn't go because he's pursuing some sort of perceived benefit down the line, usually related to NCAA seating. So a couple of things brought that into focus this weekend, but I, I want to say a couple of things before I get too into it. One, two things can be true at once. One, we can be disappointed. I was disappointed, right? I was disappointed that we didn't get to see Drake Ayala take on Eric Barnett yesterday. I wanted to see that match. Many other fans felt similar. That's an exciting matchup. But you can be disappointed in that and also acknowledge there are legitimate reasons for guys not to wrestle, right? And there is illness. There is injury. These things do happen. But the broader point I want to get into and why I think that is the case far more often than true ducking where you're ducking and not wrestling a match for a benefit down the line is this. I'm going to get into it, but the NCAA seeding process and what goes into it, it's very rare that you're going to see that benefit by not wrestling a match. Extremely rare. One, theoretically, you would need to be ranked ahead of that person in order to get that benefit, right? Because you've got nothing to lose. If you're ranked behind someone and then you lose to them, you were supposed to, and that doesn't really hurt your your rank, your seed, whatever you want to call it. Um, but if you are ranked ahead and you skip the match, okay, you could say maybe there, that's, that's the case. But what you're neglecting in all this is what goes into the seeding process, what goes into this algorithm, the math and the human element. It's very, it's opaque, it's tough to put your finger on. Every year we're like, this guy's the four, this guy's the five, this doesn't make sense. So it happens every year. So the idea that these coaches have this firm of a grasp on the exact, if I move this chess piece here, then in a month from now, after conferences and after the more matches have ta taken place, I'll get this benefit, right? Because who are we often talking about as the wrestlers who are ducking. Who gets the most criticism? It's Big Ten wrestlers, some Big 12, some ACC. And what do we know about all three of those conferences? They're bloodbaths. They're gauntlets. They're extremely difficult to win. So you can be missing, missing a duel in early February or January or December when you have the entire season or in your conference tournament on the other side of it. You can't hide, right? You have to wrestle in the conference tournament. And if you do poorly there, you're going to get crushed in the seeds, right? You can't bomb out in conference and then get a good seed. They, they've messed with the algorithm so that if you don't perform there, you're not going to get the benefit. So let's look at that. And, and people are, are accusing Drake Ayala of ducking, including Eric Barnett, who he's supposed to wrestle. He puts a little quote tweet out there with the duck emoji. Now, Eric can feel that way and feel that he, you know, that Drake could have wrestled and he didn't and he's avoiding him. But the math doesn't really, and what we know, the context around that doesn't make a lot of sense. It doesn't make sense to me personally. Because what have we said all year long about 125 pounds? It's the most unpredictable. No one knows what's going to happen. Uh, doesn't matter how you seed it. It'll happen. You know, you wrestle this tournament 10 times, you get 10 different champs, 80 different All Americans, et cetera, et cetera. Right? Well, okay, if that's true and that's the case, then you think that Tom Brands, Terry Brands, they're, they're crunching the numbers and they're saying, okay, if we sit this duel and we go to Big Tens, we're going to be the three and not the four? I, that, doesn't, that doesn't jive because where's the advantage there? We're all saying all year long, there's no advantage really in these seeds, right? Um, for, for 125 pounds and for conferences. And Eric Barnett's in his conference. So we can't run from them forever. So they are very likely, there's a good chance, there's a possibility they hit at their conference tournament. So if you wrestle them now, wrestle them, what difference does it make, right? Drake Ayala hasn't beaten Eric Barnett yet. He doesn't have that win. 
So why, why would he not wrestle him? That doesn't make sense to me. You saw, and it, of course, you know, I, I tweeted like, you know, upset, not upset, not upset, but I was disappointed. I wanted to see that match. And then everyone's like, what are you going to say about Nagal? It's like, what? Same thing. You think Aaron Nagal is avoiding Jacob Van D? You think he doesn't want that match? You think he doesn't want to be out there wrestling? Do you think that he's really preserving some seed? I, I don't. I don't think that's what's going on there. I don't think these guys are sitting. I think the vast majority of these sits, these guys not wrestling, are injury or illness related, right? Um, and I, I, as I look through the year, I think there's one duck where I'll say, oh, listen, I'm not going to pretend it doesn't happen, okay? I'm not being that naive. I'm not giving that much air cover to all, every coach in America. I don't think that's the case. But the, the only one that is like really makes a lot of sense to me with all the context around it is the Julian Ramirez-David Carr match. Now, Julian went to CKLV, toughest tournament in America, and he beat David Carr. Huge win to have. And they, those two were to duel a couple weeks later. And Ben Askren, the Monday after CKLV, said, I bet you Julian doesn't wrestle this match. And I said, well, I don't know. I wouldn't be so cynical, Ben. They, they're gonna, Cornell's going to want to win this duel too. You can't give up pin points or major tech points at 165. You're probably going to need to win that match or at least be competitive and preserve bonus. And sure enough, the duel comes. Julian wrestles that day. He wrestles, but then when it comes time to wrestle David Carr, he, he sits. So you could say that, and then you look at the rest of their schedule. It's like, man, Cornell and Dave, for, Dave, or for Julian, he set up pretty well to, to win his conference and have a really good seed. So I guess you could say there's, there's some benefit there. But by and large, I think, and, and the question that you could be asking is, are these guys, could they go? Maybe they're not fully healthy and who is at this point in the season in college wrestling who's feeling great maybe that's pretty rare and maybe that bar over the last couple years for being healthy and available to go maybe that has been lowered I think that could that could be the case I think five ten years ago if you're sick you suck it up and, and, and you wrestle if you're a little dinged up you tape it up you ice it up whatever you got to do get ready and wrestle anymore it's about getting to the finish line. It's about getting to the end. And what do we know about, just to use Drake as an example, he's, he's been battling some injuries. He was injured as a, as a true freshman. He was recovering last year um, and, you know, hoping he's healthy this year. But a lot of these guys are not, are not fully healthy. And so I'll, I'll give some, I'll acknowledge that that bar could be lowered for sure. But I think it, it, the whole ducking conversation requires a very, how do I want to say it? I think, you're, I think you have to be pretty ignorant about the seeding process in general to think that they're getting these super preferential seeds down the line. And because not only do they have conferences or other competitions in between, right? But then they also, you also, not only, you could get a good seed, but if the tournament's not seeded quite right, then Sometimes the four seed could be better than the three, right? We've seen that in the past. Like who, if you recall, Aaron Brooks was not the one seed last year because he lost to Marcus Coleman. He was the two, I think, two or three. I think he was the two. It was not the one because it was Parker Keckeisen. So it's like in that scenario, man, you want to be the four or the five. You want to be opposite Aaron Brooks. These things happen. And so the idea with all these wrestlers and all these upsets, we see them every single week, all these upsets. The idea that you can sit in February or January and it's going to have some benefit down the line, I don't think that's the game these coaches are playing. I don't think it's the game that the athletes are playing. And I think the overall seating process basically displays that that's the case. These guys are not sitting for that reason.